Most people think of neurofeedback as using audio or visual cues to try and change your brainwaves to certain targets and improve the function of your brain. In the past, you would need a professional to quantify where your brainwave levels were actually at and design a custom protocol specific for your brain. But what if you had a device that you could use at home that not only measured your brainwaves in real time to customize your protocols, but also used near infrared light stimulation through your scalp in soundscapes to help you achieve dramatic change in your brain function. The device that I'm talking about is called the Sensei, and it's been going through years of product development before being released at volume this year. For those of you who are new here, I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, a US Navy trained physician, and I've been testing and using brain wearables for over 10 years now. When I first heard about this device, I wasn't even sure I wanted to try it. I've reviewed a lot of other neurofeedback devices on my channel, and I felt that my audience was quite happy using other products that I've talked about to enhance the brain function. But then after being asked by about 100 different audience members on my YouTube channel to take a look at the Sensei, I really took a serious look at it, and I was fascinated fascinated. I was very intrigued by the unique approaches that they're doing that I haven't seen in other neurofeedback wearables. So I've been using it for the past six months and I can tell you with absolute conviction that this neurofeedback device makes me feel a lot different by the end of the sessions. And I actually quantitatively know that it's having long lasting positive brain effects on me because I have the measurement data to prove it. It comes with the system and it's something that you can use on your brain as well. This measurement and stimulation neurofeedback loop is something that people have been asking for for a long time. And I think we finally have a device that really achieves it here in a comprehensive wearable format for the first time in history. In this video, we'll talk about what exactly is special about this device to include the sensing and enhancing peak alpha frequency through EEG neurofeedback and photobiomodulation, tracking your progress through evoked related potentials. And I'll also talk about what I initially didn't like about this device and how it compares to other neurofeedback devices that I've used in the past. The Sensei is equipped with three active research grade EEG sensors, seven photobiomodulation modules, and a heart rate sensor. It comes with this funny little water pen with a brush that you can use to wet the sensors and give you the best signal. I often in the past was using a wet paper towel with the other devices, so it's a nice improvement from that to be honest. More professional if you ask me. It is quite comfortable when you put it on, even with these gold plated mesh EEG sensors that go through your hair and on your scalp. And the wetness on the sensors really doesn't bother me and it's really important for getting the best signal. For example, there's really important meditation brain waves at the top of your head that Sensei is able to read with these damp sensors through your hair, unlike some other neurofeedback wearables that only get signals from your forehead or around your ears. The one thing that did annoy me at the beginning when using this device was that you had to pair both the audio and headset EEG data Bluetooth connection separately. That created two different Bluetooth connections that you had to set up. It was a bit of a pain at first, but the pairing really has improved over the last six months and it's really seamless to me at this point. I learned later that they're actually pushing so much brainwave data through the headset Bluetooth connection to the app that they needed separate connections in order to to allow the headset to function at its highest potential. They simply couldn't get all the data for the headset through one Bluetooth connection. There's a lot of different neurofeedback formats on Sensei to achieve different states with names on the app to include calm, chill, focus, and drive, as well as others. There's a lot of different soundscapes and settings to choose from in case you do get bored with the default settings. And all of these surface level settings are incorporated to what's really under the hood of this wellness device, which I feel is really important to the overall experience. First, it actually changes your state during the session, which you can feel throughout the day after the neurofeedback and the photobiomodulation. Second, the research is showing that it makes long lasting brain changes through EEG and heart rate feedback. And we know this because third, they can be measured through EEG and ERP signals over time. I think one of the coolest things about Sensei is that it measures your peak alpha frequency before the sessions and it adjusts its photobiomodulation and soundscape to increase that peak alpha frequency in you. Everyone has a peak alpha frequency, which is where the power of alpha is highest in them within their 8 to 12 hertz brainwave frequency band. Studies have shown that having a high peak alpha frequency correlates with improved 
decision making and IQ scores. This is especially true in the prepare, boost, or brightening training options within the app. Other companies that I've worked with, like Interaxon with the Muse, are also focusing on peak alpha frequency as an important brain metric, like when I took a look at my peak alpha in sleep and meditation with Muse this past summer. But to my knowledge, these other devices haven't specifically targeted increasing the peak alpha frequency through stimulation techniques yet. As far as my mental approach when meditating with this device, I feel that an open awareness mindfulness approach tends to be the most effective. The device actually tells you during the sessions that you should try and be present and focus on the soundscape during the stimulation. So when I'm sitting there with the sensei, I like to adopt the mindset of just being an open vessel and allow the soundscapes and photobiomodulation to carry me into the desired state. I definitely notice that if my analytical mind kicks in and I start thinking too much during the session, the neural feedback is very responsive to that, the music dies down and you're out of flow state. But if I open back up and become more present and stop thinking so much, the music comes back up in volume and I'm off to the races into the desired state. Most of my unguided meditation sessions over the past few years have really been about having focus on different energy centers and having a very energetic experience as a result. But I noticed that if I try to control the sensei experience too much by focusing intensely on different energy points, that really gets in the way of what the program's trying to do. So after using the sensei for a while, I've learned that it's best if I adopt a soft focus and overall awareness of my body and energy field and just let the music flow through me and try to match the vibrational frequency and the tones of the soundscape. That seems to have the most dramatic effect on my state change during the meditation. If you try to fight it too much, you might feel like nothing happened during the session, but since I've adopted this open mindfulness approach with the sensei, nine times out of 10, I feel a dramatic shift during the sessions and for a few hours afterwards. And then if I wanna do more unguided meditation session work after the sensei experience, that tends to go very well because my brain just has been awakened and is in this vibrational state that's very easy to focus on energy points with. Of note for you neuroscience nerds out there, the device uses wavelets instead of fast Fourier transform for even more precise mathematics for the digital signal processing. This might be why I find it so responsive to my mental state when I'm actually in the Sensei experience. And for those of you that haven't looked into near-infrared light stimulation before, the science on it is very clear that photobiomodulation increases blood flow, it creates more nutrients for the brain cells, it removes waste, and decreases inflammation. And most people would agree that this actually aids neurogenesis meaning that these are permanent improvements to your brain. To set up my process, I like to use Sensei first thing in the morning before I get distracted by other chores. I sit down on my meditation mat, connect the device, wet the sensors, part my hair. You might have to adjust it a little bit because the device is very sensitive to movement artifacts. So keep really still when it calibrates, but I've noticed in the past six months that this has actually been improving a lot. It's been a lot less finicky and they've made major improvements with their firmware updates. So as of late, it's been really seamless for me to sit down connect it to my Bluetooth, put it on, and then just go into the session. When I'm in the Sensei experience, I try to just be an open vessel and let the sound move through me. And then I take note of how I feel before and after the session and go into my workday. And then afterwards, I'm doing an unguided meditation where I'm visualizing my ideal future. That state that the Sensei leaves me in really helps me lock on to those visualizations and that feeling of the energy just flowing through me. And if you subscribe to the teachings of Joe Dispenza and Law of Attraction, some theorize that if you're in a deeper meditative state like Sensei puts you in, the universe will be more responsive to your visualizations and your goal setting, bringing you the opportunities, people, and resources that you need to achieve your goals. In order to track your brain performance improvements, the Sensei measures evoked related potentials, otherwise known as ERPs, which are the voltage changes that the brain produces in direct response to stimuli like sound or flashes of light. The ERP testing uses this box and the science behind it is really cool. They use a standardized research task called Flanker, which in the past was confined to research labs, but now you can do it at home in 15 minutes 
which is a huge accomplishment in itself. There's a lot of engineering challenges that actually go into creating a device that can take accurate ERP measurements because any changes to the data through the engineering will affect the ERP, which happens in milliseconds. The ERP testing allows you to see how your reaction time, error rate, inhibition control, and speed of processing changes over time of using the Sensei. The flanker task is really designed to correlate how you perform in life. Normally these ERP levels decline with age in the average population. But what's really exciting and honestly is a scientific breakthrough is that through their users, Sensei is being able to demonstrate that they're able to increase the ERP metrics and slow any age-related decline in those ERP measures. In practice, I find if I'm an open vessel during the Sensei experience, the increase in peak alpha frequency makes me feel more alert and ready to get into flow state during the day. And as I said before, it enhances any non-guided meditation sessions that I like to do after. That's why I really like doing it in the morning, but there are people that are reporting improved sleep metrics on Whoop or Aura after using the device on chill in order to wind down at night before bed. I found that the app itself has a fun science fiction vibe and it gives you points along the way which can be rewarding. There are a lot of different settings to include focus, calm, chill, and drive, and each uses a unique set of neurofeedback brainwave and neuromodulation brainwave targets to achieve different states that either prepare you to work or wind down or anywhere in between. Now the big downside I would say is that this device is quite a bit more expensive than other systems like the Muse headband, but it also has a lot more to offer in a lot of respects. The most obvious of these is the ERP testing and the photobiomodulation, which Muse cannot do. Also, I'm not aware of any specific measurements of peak alpha frequency that actually changes the neurofeedback landscape on Muse currently. One of the things I like about this device, especially for people that have tried neurofeedback in the past and felt like it didn't do anything for them, they probably will experience a significant state change when they try the Sensei device within the sessions. And at the end of the day, that's how you really feel Feel like it's doing something to your brain. And being able to actually track this progress with things like ERP is really reassuring that it's doing what it's proposing to do. Unfortunately, like pretty much all of these devices, we can't see the raw EEG on the app because they're within the health wellness category of regulatory bodies. That's just where we're at right now. And you can't actually see what your peak alpha was on a specific day, but they are coming out with a bunch of metrics later this year that will give you a brain health score based on these measurements. For people that have struggled with neurofeedback in the past and felt like it didn't do anything for them, this might be a total step up. It would be an investment, but I think that you're going to experience a much more profound state change than some of these other neurofeedback devices because I think a lot of meditation training potentiates these other devices like Muse makes them more effective. But if you've just been having trouble with meditation and neurofeedback in general and can't seem to make any progress, Sensei has more of an oomph. It has that outside photostimulation effect and soundscape to really push you over the edge and experience a significant state change, which I think would encourage you to practice more and get more effective at changing your brain state through meditation so you find significant benefit in it. So for those of you that are satisfied with your meditation practice or just want to play around with a cheaper device and, and maybe track your brain waves through something like Mind Monitor, Muse might be a better, cheaper choice. But Sensei, I really see as like the next level up product for people that are really serious about investing and enhancing their meditation sessions and their brain performance. Also, if you've done a lot of brain training but never have had access to ERP testing before, this might be a good device for you to invest and to really track how you've been doing over time and if you're making improvements. I do have an affiliate code below for Sensei if you want to get a little discount and help support this channel. And let me know in the comments below now that you've seen this video, what would you be more interested in trying? Sensei, Muse, both? Let me know and your reasons why. And if you're still confused about photobiomodulation, take a look at this video where I took a look at different red light therapy devices and compared Sensei to other near infrared stimulation devices. For that video, click here and I'll see you on the other side.